Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams, and joining me today on the summit is the coach of track and field at Friends University, Coach Henry Brunn. And Coach, your teams, both the men's and women's indoor track and field teams, just came away with conference championships in the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference. It, it was a big weekend for you, I know, but uh, for both teams to come away victorious and win those conference titles, I, I, I know that's exciting. Yeah, it definitely speaks to the resilience of the kids on our team. Um, you go back to August and just what COVID has done to this season as far as restrictions with training and the, the different protocols and even the, the instances of where there was quarantine due to contact tracing throughout the fall and the winter. Um, getting uh, all the way to February um, is a blessing. And going into this meet, knowing that it was extended from a typical two-day meet to three days, um, it, it was a challenge that we sat down as a team and, and kind of talked about what the, the challenges would be. We knew it would be a road of adversity. We knew it wouldn't be an easy road to victory just because of the different variables. And, um, of course, our biggest rival in the conference, University of St. Mary up in Leavenworth, Kansas. And um, looking at national rankings and regional rankings, it's been close all the way to that conference meet. So uh, going into the weekend, we knew it would be a battle. And. I can tell you right now, we did not anticipate how tight of a race it would be on either side of this thing, all the way down to, you know, the final events on both sides to win this. Um, but they were up for the challenge. Uh, so were the coaches there to support and motivate. And I mean, it was a tale of two different stories on the men's side, just knowing that, you know, this is the best men's program we've had in, in the program's history, top five in the country at one point in time. And University of St. Mary is right there with us at number six in the country. Um, they arguably have one of the best middle distance and long distance programs in the country, but we're a well-rounded team. And we knew we had to survive the distance events in order to make it to the end. And somehow we squeaked by single digit wins um, on the women's side. It looked pretty promising at the beginning of the meet. And, you know, when you go through the three days, you talk about just adversity in general and a couple of events didn't go our way early. We didn't maximize points here or there. And um, we have some weaker events this year that we typically don't have. And, going into that final day and there's five events left and we're down 45 points at a conference meet. It really <laughs> took the women saying, we're not going to take no for an answer. And to know that four events later with one event left, we're tied. That was, I was holding my breath for about an hour and a half there. Um, but they came and they delivered. It was pretty amazing to watch throughout the weekend. And I mean, well-deserved for both of the men and the women this weekend, for sure. That is incredible. And I've been following the track and field program there for a while because of the success, and, and it's been something to follow. So I, I will say that uh, my eyebrows were raised just a little bit to think, okay, listen, they've got a little ways to come back. Can they do that? And I want you to talk about that for just a moment because what a dramatic finish, not only coming back in, in the final five events like that, but getting down to the end, it, it sounds like something for, you know with a, a movie script. Uh, you come down to the very end, and it's tied going into that last event, the four by 400 uh take us through that just a little bit and and what that was like yeah so at, at 9 30 in the morning on day three we actually had a team meeting uh our coaches and our, our women's team we kind of got together and we talked about the challenge of the day um we knew we would be down we we knew how the events laid out that we would be down and there were some events on day one and day two that put us in a bigger hole than we wanted to be in um, but at 9.30 that morning, I, we, we pretty much reiterated to the women over and over, this is possible. Um, and we explained to them that when we walk out this door and go to the track, there aren't any excuses today. It's we're, gonna, we're going to perform, and you guys are totally ready for this. You know, we prepared ourselves throughout the season. You've overcome so much to be here. Don't let this deficit feel like it's unattainable to reach. Um, going into the first event in the women's, four by, or in the women's Open 400, um, we actually had a line, a lane violation for our top 400 runner, who is the top two runner in the conference. And so with her disqualification, we actually lost even more points. Um, so we were down even more thinking it was even more impossible to do, but the primary women who, who were carrying this team buckled down. You know, you look at a 60 dash and we had Maria Botella, who's a freshman from Barcelona, and it's been a big year for her transitioning from coming all the way to Kansas and throughout a pandemic and getting acclimated in the family dynamic of our team. And she finally started really feeling herself again and really performed in that 60 meters in the 200. Um, you look at the hurdle races and Elena Henderson, who's a senior for us, uh, really set the tone, uh, went out there and won the conference title there. And 
you can see that we picked up a third place finish in the hurdles from a freshman on our team. Um, and the time that she ran in that 60 hurdle final is one full second faster than the first time she ran this indoor season. Um, so she really improved significantly to step up. Um, you look at our 600 meters uh, race that we had and our top four girls uh, in the middle distance who were in that four by 800 that are nationally ranked. And these girls are our horses. They went out and performed, got some big points for us. Um, you look at the 200 meter dash and we did well there too with our top two sprinters, the girl who was disqualified in the 400 and she came back and ran well in the 200. Um, but event by event, it was telling them, reiterating, you need to believe, you need to believe, you need to believe. And little by little, the, you know, the lead started dwindling. And it was in the matter of probably 30 minutes that you saw the lead dwindle from 45 to zero. And going into the four by four, we put our four, our, four, our best four out there. And basically our message to them, knowing that we just had to be better than St. Mary in the four by four. I told them, I said, put it out of reach. And they went and ran 15 seconds faster than the second best team in the conference. <laughs> so um, they, they went out there and put that emphatic exclamation point on the comeback. And it was a full team effort. I mean, telling the team, explaining to them like a team championship is truly team scoring points, that eighth place in a particular event, that seventh on day one, you know, the people who had a personal best, but made other teams work harder. So they were tired in other events. It all kind of came together the way that it needed to under the pressure we had. I was, I was impressed. I was pleased with them. Um, you know, you saw the energy in the room. Uh, we, it seemed like we were the only team in the room the last hour and a half of the meet. And that's something special to see the coaches and the, and the kids just being so invested in what's going on there, pouring the energy as a spectator into the runners performing. That's what got them where they needed to be in that last hour, hour and a half of that meet. And so, like I said, it was a nail biter and yeah, there were instances where I said, I don't know if we can do this, but I had to keep telling myself and the rest of the team, we can do this. And that's the magic of coaching. Sometimes it's all about motivation. Sometimes it's not even about the training or the heat or the lane or any of that telling them that they can so that they go out there and do the impossible. And they went out there and did some, some pretty amazing stuff that last day for sure. That sounds like a, a storybook finish from a friend's perspective, especially sounds like a storybook finish. And, and again, just something that, uh, you know, you probably look back at this someday and go, you can't even make this stuff up. This is this is how it just worked out. And I know as time goes on, uh, these memories will become even sweeter for you. We're visiting with Coach Henry Brun today on the summit. And I do encourage you, please do consider subscribing to the YouTube channel, Midwest Sports Net. As we talk about friends, indoor track and field for just a moment, too. And I, I, I think it does warrant this. I want to give this out. A shout out to Elena Henderson. You already mentioned her as well as Eileen Garola, Aubrey Donnelly, and Caitlin Massey, who were that four by 400 team that came away and, and ultimately uh, proved to put friends over the top in the KCAC championship. By the way, Garola also was named the athlete of the meet too for her performance throughout. So uh, a shout out to her as well. Coach, I know that this is your second year with the program, but you've come into a program that was doing pretty well. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, for the women, it's their seventh consecutive uh, conference championship. For the men, it had been a little while and some runner-up finishes along the way. They finally get over the hump there and win another conference title. First time in a little while there. But talk about what it's been like then for you to come into a program like this and, and just take the torch and carry it further. Yeah, I had a lot of conversations prior to stepping in with Coach Cole Davis, who was here before me and really set the foundation for that success. And even through this season leading up to the conference meet this year, we still communicate with one another just on – what this program means and the legacy of the success here. And it's looking at it from a whole perspective, the academic piece, that athletic piece, the cultural piece, um, and understanding that we need to be touching on all of those impacting the lives of the student athletes we have in our program here. Um, coming in here, like you said, there was an established success. Um, it became not so much sustaining that success as much as it was looking in and when you're successful in order to challenge yourself to be better you got to now be a lot more nitpicky you got to be combing through um with you know a fine comb to figure out what events do we need to be maximizing on do we need a new coach here for this particular event should we be recruiting in that area and so in the last year and a half that's kind of been a lot of what i'm doing a lot of listening you know a lot of making sure that the traditions of the success we have and the baseline the foundation stays the same 
but then being able to add little things so that this home, as you will, if you're using the foundation example, stays stable, sustainable for the long term, the next five years, 10 years, 20 years. You know, what is the next step in this process? A lot of that was making sure we maximize our coaching staff to what we call myself and Jason Parr, the head cross country coach, the A team. You know, our goal here in the next two to three seasons is to win a national title. Um, those are some big things to talk about. When you're talking about wanting to win a national title, it means number one in the country, not just number one in the conference. And being number one in the conference also doesn't warrant you being top five, top three in the nation. Um, so we had to really dive deep and figure out what areas do we need to maximize on in order for us to be that national contender. Uh, we added some different pieces this year that have put us one step closer to what that is, knowing that at one point this season, both the men's and women's program have been top five in the country. I think right now going into nationals next week, our men's and women's program are number seven. Um, we stay pretty firm at number one in the region and number one in the conference, but it's trying to figure out where do we get nationals points now? Um, you know, going into next week at the national championships, it's, it's really looking at the two different stories here again with the men and the women on the men's side, I've been harping on them from January, change the narrative, the narrative, like you had mentioned the history over the last four or five years, we're the second best team in the conference. Are we performing when it matters? Are there things out of our control that we're not controlling to the best of our ability? Let's change what that is. Let's change what people say about the men's program here for friends. And they heard it loud and clear, as you can see from that conference championship. But not only have they heard it from a conference standpoint, but going into nationals, we have an athlete entered in 11 different events at the national championships next week. Um, their goal is to be top four and come home with a trophy. Right. Um, on the women's side, it's a little bit smaller of a group, still a decent group. Uh, we've got all three relays at the national meet. Um, we've got a couple individual athletes. You talked about Eileen and Aubrey, who have been you know, a staple of our success here this season. Both of them are ranked top three in their respective individual events and have a shot to win a national title next week. Um, we've got our race walk group that's always competitive. Um, and we're looking at this group. It's a smaller group with limited events, but we can still maximize points and continue to be a top five team at the national meet. Then it's going into next year. And we're, this year with recruiting, we've taken a global approach. Um, we've expanded our recruitment a bit um, outside of this region of the country. So right now we're looking at a roster going into August that covers about 23 or 24 states within the country, which is great. Um, but then we started recruiting internationally. So we've got kids from Spain who have signed. Uh, we have a sprinter from Nigeria, a sprinter from Belgium, who's, who uh, we've been working with and communicating with to be here this fall. And so now it's looking at if you want to win a national title, how do we do it on the biggest stage? And it's really stepping outside of our comfort zone. Um, and that's what the last two years have really been like. This season is really how do I expand upon the success to make sure that this is sustainable long term. And we've been doing it right. We want to make sure we got good students with good grades, good athletic potential. But do they fit our family dynamic, the culture of Friends University and the culture of our team? And we think we've been doing it right. And we want to continue to move in that direction to get the right fits and not just so much stats on a piece of paper. And that's always nice to hear that you're doing it the right way. And, and of course, uh, Dr. Rob Bramsire, the athletic director there, I know he, he promotes a culture like what you're talking about. And so that's, uh, that's always really nice to hear. Well, the national competition coming up in Yankton, South Dakota. And I know that you guys are going to be ready for that. And then really quickly, and, and again, thank you for your time today, coach, but uh, the turnaround after nationals, I mean, outdoor season starts it, is, is there a big turnaround and, and, uh, what what do you look at in, in seeing some of the, the same people come over and compete in, in a little bit of a, of a different setting? Right. Um, well, there's there's a reset period for us that's about one to two weeks after your last competition indoors, just because we want to prevent burnout as much as possible, especially if you are a cross-country runner who does middle distance or long distance. You started in August, and track kids did with preseason, but it's not nearly the same as going out and running a full cross-country season. We want to make sure that they feel refreshed going into that outdoor season. And you're right. Our first competition is probably the third week in March. We've got on the schedule right now, and we've got a home meet the beginning of April. And, you know, we, we've got to be prepared for what that looks like for us to stay competitive. Um, this year there's another wrench thrown in it with uh, how COVID is scheduled the COVID protocols have rescheduled some, some sporting events. Our cross-country teams, both the men and the women's team, finished second at the conference meet in November. 
which qualified them for the uh, cross country national meet, which is actually the first day of our home meet in April. So somehow throughout all of this, we've got to figure out a way to prepare some men on our team to go run an 8K out in a in the woods, basically in April, and our women's team going to run a 5K. And um, we've been able to do some good training. Luckily, we kind of understand what we're doing there. We've got good coaches to support that initiative, and we're going to put our best foot forward out there. And both of our teams are ranked in the top 20 nationally cross country, and that's exciting. Um, but it, it's a balancing act and making sure that the you know the big key to this is just moderation listening to our athletes, building quality relationships with them so that we know when too much is too much, when too little is too little, and when just right is just right. Um, but it's looking like some of the relays and things that we have indoors should be able to go back outdoors and do some great stuff at the national meet. And um, you start talking about how the outdoor track season is more sprint heavy versus the middle and longer distances of indoor track. And we have some sprinters chomping at the bit to get out there and run the 100 get out there and run the four by 100. Um, we should have some pretty solid teams on the men and women's side in those events. Um, so that'll be exciting for them to really grow into those roles. And um, it's just being patient. And also just knowing that with, you know, county and state policies with things getting better throughout this pandemic, it may open up some opportunities for us to be able to compete at some bigger meets. Uh, one of our biggest meets we're looking at going to is at West Texas A&M. Um, at the end of March and take a team out there. And, you know, our I talked with their coach the other day and they're bringing some division one and division two talent to that meet. So that's going to be a good measuring stick for us on can we hang in with some of the best talent in the country? That's really going to set us up for some NAI success in May. Um, but it's it's just being organized, planning, listening to our athletes and and making sure that we take it one week at a time and don't get ahead of ourselves. But I think the outdoor season is going to be pretty darn exciting for us as well after this indoor season is done next week for sure. It sounds like a lot of fun, and you have brought fun to the table even today, telling the stories of of the excitement of the KCAC championship and the the conference championship titles won by both the women's and men's team for the indoor track and field teams. Coach, I, I, again, I know you, you probably wouldn't have drawn it up with that much excitement. No, not, but, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but the not memories the memories are going to be great for you all, and I think it'll be something that's talked about on campus there in Wichita for a long, long time to come and, and should be, uh, I would imagine, a great recruiting tool as well that uh, you get here and you never know. You, you, you're going to have a chance even down to the last moment. Coach Henry Brunn, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. We appreciate that. Success to you at Nationals coming up in South Dakota very quickly and then the turnaround of the outdoor season. And we look forward to getting to visit with you again. And in the meantime, thanks so much. No, I appreciate it, Joey. Thank you so much for having me on. And uh, thank you for wishing us luck. And we're hoping we're going out there and coming home with some hardware.